All right, I'm here with Al Manorino, one of our great field evangelists out of uh, the New York area. Al, welcome to the webinar. Uh, thank you, David. Happy to be here. And Al worked on part of the EMS backend, the part of EMS that is going to get the sales product items when the customer gets near an area of the store. I just want to spend a few minutes with you, Al, talking about how you implemented your part of the EMS server. So why don't you tell everybody what we're looking at here? So, uh, so thank you, David. So one of the key items with Red Server are, is being able to uh, have REST endpoint publishing for your API. So, so Red Server is an application server for your backend, for your Delphi or your C++ build of code. So you put your Delphi or C++ code into Red Server, and it's going to create manageable REST endpoints. So what we're looking at here is we created a new uh, EMS package that we're calling Get Sales Zone, and on here we have a data we have a data module, and on the data module we dropped a Fire DAC connection component. And if you look at the Fire DAC connection component, here's where we can connect to our backend data source. So in this case, we're connecting to an Interbase database, and there's the name of the file. And we can click on the test button to make sure we can test and connect to our uh, interbase database. So connection is fine. And on this data module is now where we can, we can store some queries that we want to run against the database. So the first query we have here, we go against our products table and bring back SKUs that are like uh, 231. So there's the three SKUs that come back from this, or three products that come back from this, from this SKU. And the second query are, will be daily specials. So when we run this query, it will return back the daily uh, daily specials based on the store we are in. So now what we want to do now is we want to create uh, endpoints that will run these queries and, re and return the data back. So here we created a resource name called trigger, and we have an endpoint called get sale zone. So as David mentioned earlier, this endpoint is going to be used when the client, for example, a mobile app, enters a beacon fence sales area or zone. And then the client app will call this get sales zone API, and the client will pass the zone location of the retail store. For example, maybe they are in the serial zone area of the retail store. And then we want to return back to the client all of the sales items from the sales area zone. And as you look through how we implemented this API, uh, for this API, we're making use of the tJSON text writer class that represents a writer to serialize the, the JSON data. And as you, and as you see here, if we, if we walk through it, uh, we're going to call that, that fire that query that we just saw earlier, that Enter sales zone serial. We're going to call the fire DAC query enter sales enter sales zone enter sales zone serial that we sort of defined on this module, and then the the JSON writer reference and pointing it to this JSON body JSON writer, and that's going to put the results into a to a JSON object. So we run through the query and we return the rows. And it gets all returned back as a nice JSON object, and then we take that JSON object and we pass it to the to the colon client. So now we've got our EMS package file. How do we connect that up to our EMS server? Uh, great question. So when you first start your, when you first create your your EMS server, there's an EMS server that INI file that gets created, and there's a, there's a sec there's a section in there that allows you to load these individual packages into the EMS server. So here's the, here's the get sales zone uh, BIPL package DLL file that we created, and here's how you load it. So then other folks can create their own REST APIs and create their own packages, and you'll add them to this list, and then as EMS starts, all of these packages with all of these REST API endpoints will get loaded inside of EMS server. Let's go here and start 
the uh, EMS dev server we're using for development, right, Al? And then we have a production server as well? That's correct. So EMS, as you see here, is either a Windows 32-bit or a Windows 64-bit application, and you start it up from command line. The EMS development server shows up, and as you, and as you look at the, at the logging output, you see it creates this EMS server that configuration file, the INI file that we're looking at right behind it. We see that we're running a, a licensed version with, with five users max that we can use and, and test with. And then we see our endpoint got created. We have a resource called trigger and an endpoint called uh, get get the get the sales zone. So now we can we can now test we can now test running this endpoint uh, right in, right from a browser. So if we open up a browser and we pass it our resource name of, of trigger and and how we implement it or how we architect this application is the the mobile client, as it's walking through the retail store, as it, as it enters a, a beacon fence zone, if it's in the, whatever zone it's in, we want to pass, we want to pass a string value for the zone it's in. So if it's in the toy department, we want to pass a string toy. If it's in the cereal department, we'll pass a, uh, a string cereal. So for example, if we were in the cereal department, we want to pass that string cereal back to the EMS server. And that kicks off running that query that returns the serials that are on sale for that zone. And, and here's the three serials that get returned from our database. And this information gets passed back to the client, for the client to look at and decide if they want to participate in any of these sales. In the development server, we're just getting logs of things that take place as the, as the endpoints are accessed from whatever, whether it was one of these console applications or from a mobile or desktop client, we would see a log of those showing up. Open up the console. We also give you this nice management console. You can log into it with console user and console pass as default. And here we have access to all of the users, any of the groups that we have, installation, uh, edge modules, resources, and analytics. So analytics tells us how folks are using the application, what endpoints are they going after. So for example, if you go under user analytics and look at users total calls, or user, user API calls, we'll see all of our resources and all of our endpoints to give us an idea of how people are using the application, what endpoints are they going after, what APIs are they calling. Okay, Al, thank you so much for taking this quick look and we'll uh, move on now to looking at more of the implementation and use of RAD server uh, in this department store application.